I'm Kaden. Last time we followed 10 year old Caden, who has cystic fibrosis, to his hospital checkup. Because of Caden's condition, he has to have a special diet. I have to have high fat food like cake and chocolate. Caden's high fat diet is important because mucus clogs his pancreas, which produces the enzymes to help him digest his food. My mum helps me monitor my food, but I'm going up to my secondary school soon, which means I'll have to monitor it a bit more, which I'm not looking forward to. Today's my last day at primary school, and it's my leaving assembly. I got a medal and a certificate for getting better at everything. Well done, Caden. I'm just about to get my lunch. As well as having a high-fat diet, Caden has to take tablets containing enzymes which help him break down his food. And this flower normally gives me my medication. I have three tablets with my dinner and I have two tablets with my pudding. If he doesn't have his enzymes with his food, he won't digest his food properly. And you get really coolie belly ache, don't you, Caden? In September, I have to do it all by myself. I'm kind of excited because that means I won't have a missed plan going, take your tablet. Thanks for following my story. See you next time. Bye. I'm wearing a special suit, but can you guess what it's used for? Oh, I know. You're going into space. Uh, nope. Try again, Zand. OK, I've got it. You're about to drive a Formula One car. Uh, no, Zand. Wrong again. How's he doing that with the music? Anyway, Zand is wrong. This is PPE, or personal protective equipment. It's used so that doctors and nurses can treat patients with serious infections without getting ill themselves. Um, I knew that, really. Now, you might have seen suits like this on the news because of the recent outbreak of a very serious virus called Ebola in West Africa. Now, these things make the news because they're rare, but they're also very serious. So, what can we do to stop them in their tracks? Well, it's something I'm closely involved in. So this is the lab that I work in when I'm not on Operation Ouch. Ooh, I've always wanted to see Chris's lab. This is my boss, Greg. Hi, Greg. Hi, Chris. Who's that? That is Operation Ouch. Hi, Operation Ouch. Oh, hi, Greg. Come on, Chris, you've got work to do. Now, I study a virus called HIV, but scientists like me study all viruses using really similar techniques to work out how to treat and prevent diseases. And I'm about to show you how we do it. An infectious disease like a virus is similar to a burglar who's found exactly the right spanner to break into your cell's security system and infect them. Scientists like me... Oi! want to find out which part of the virus spanner unlocks the cell. Then we can stop the spanner working and create medicine to make people better. To show you how we do it, I've created my own infectious disease demonstration. I'm going to start with a real virus, but there's something else. Now, to understand how viruses work, we need to make mutants. To make a mutant, I take my original virus and change one thing about it by changing the shape of the spanner. Today, I'm making two different mutants, Mutant 1 and Mutant 2. They're both the same as the original virus. Except I've made a different change in each one in their spanner to see if that change stops that spanner working. I then add each of these samples to healthy human cells to see which one is able to infect them. OK, so now the moment of truth. First, I'm going to show you what uninfected cells look like. So these are healthy cells with no virus on them. They're nice and stuck down to the plate, and there are lots and lots of them. Now cells that have been infected with the original virus. And can you see, all the cells are clumped up and they're floating around, there are a few of them. Then I turn on a special light and the cells glow green, which tells me they've been infected by the virus. So we know this virus is working really well. It has exactly the right spanner to get inside these cells and infect them and make them sick. Time to see what's happened with Mutant 1. Can you see that? The cells are floating around and, just like the original virus, they're all green. So this mutant, the first mutant, still has a working spanner. It can get inside those cells and infect them and make them sick. Now let's check Mutant 2. They look really healthy and there are lots and lots of them. And when we put on the special light, 
none of these cells are green. So the spanner of mutant number two virus is no longer working. It's not able to get inside the cells, infect them, turn them green, and make them go sick. So that's great. We've now discovered which bit of the spanner is the important bit for getting inside cells. Curing a disease doesn't just happen in a day. I've given you a demonstration of how we go about it, but sometimes it takes a long time to find the right mutation. And there are lots of diseases that we still don't understand how they infect human cells. We don't understand how their spanners work, if you like. But research like this has led to some major breakthroughs that saved a lot of lives. So, now you know what fantastic work Chris does when he's not on Operation Ouch. Good work, bro.